Welcome to the fourth in this series of salon management events delivered for free by the Salon Business Collective. We really appreciate you registering and attending our events. The collective is made up of four independent businesses. We work collaboratively to deliver free education and support to the salon spa industries. The four people representing the businesses are Sam Kendall from Salon IQ, Anthony Whitaker from Grow My Salon Business, and Phil Evans from Salon Guru, and me, Ian Edgerton from Loop HR. In today's event, we're talking ways to simplify people management and strategies to reduce stress and overwhelm. I'm not a mental health worker. I'm a former hairdresser with over 40 years experience of working with people. I've been an employee, manager, business owner, chairman of several boards and creator of Loop HR software. Almost all my work has been in or around people management and leadership. I'll explain a little later how I ended up creating software, but for now, let's kick things off. I'll break the session into three parts and we'll look at the causes of overwhelm, the different ways to address the issues of feeling overwhelmed, and how to simplify some of the more stressful tasks associated with people management. I'm sure we've all experienced overwhelm at some point. Overwhelm is a state of being mentally or emotionally swamped, and it often leaves us feeling unable to cope. It can manifest in several ways and can be triggered by many factors. So here are a few of those most common. Overload. When faced with a seemingly unmanageable number of obligations or tasks, it's easy to become overloaded, which leaves us feeling overwhelmed. Emotional stress. Overwhelming emotions such as extreme sadness, anxiety, panic, or anger can make it difficult to maintain emotional balance. Information overload. Obviously, with social media and a constant flood of data, news, emails, and messages, it's easy to become overwhelmed, making it difficult to process. And here's the important part, filter what is most important. And then there's lack of resources, meaning a lack of support or tools or stock to deliver our work. This can leave us feeling overwhelmed. And instability, the sudden unexpected events crisis or major life changes that can disrupt our sense of control and lead to feelings of overwhelm. Um, we each experience overwhelm in different ways. Now, it can include physical and emotional symptoms such as anxiety, fatigue, being irritable, uh, restless, lack of concentration, or sense of helplessness, to name but a few. So there are clearly many ways in which stress can overwhelm and can impact our lives. So let's look at the effective ways to address it. We're all aware of the tremendous value that hair and beauty professionals bring to clients, the care and wellness benefits you provide as part of your service. But as managers, we must be mindful to extend that care to our workforce and to ourselves. Now, my own experience of stress and overwhelm has been managed through a mix of mindful activities that include active learning, listening to podcasts, books, and exercise. And throughout my life, I've worked on my personal and professional development, from formal study to practical activities, such as the decade I spent working with Native American Indian elders and communities in the U.S., yoga, backpacking, and traveling the globe, and of course, working with fellow professionals to help fast-track learning. Collectively, these lessons have taught me that experience combined with study is the best way to learn. It's at that point that everything comes together. You own the knowledge. So after returning to London to live in 2001, I'd stepped away from the salon floor and I wanted to focus on working with salon owners, you know, putting the, the, all my lessons that I'd learned whilst I was away um, 
to help put structures into salon businesses. I'd work with salons around the UK and Ireland and introduce handbooks, Excel sheets, and pay systems in my naive belief that this would transform businesses. And for sure, salon owners would be delighted to have all the materials and structure. But it was usually a temporary joy, as often a few days later, the salon owner would begin to feel overwhelmed again, even though they had the tools. Why? Because they didn't make it their own. Despite paying for the materials and advice, they didn't own the process. Now, it's not a criticism by any means. We have all experienced a similar thing, be it a gym membership that we barely used or that book that we bought and never got round to reading. We all know it takes effort to learn or adopt new practices in any meaningful way. For me, the realization was that there needed to be more efficient ways of doing things. I needed to simplify the processes so that the structure evolved for the salon owner as they were using the tools, meaning it wasn't a massive learning curve. It was a gradual process. This led me to developing software, which after many variations and hundreds of salon owners providing very specific feedback, we have developed groundbreaking software to solve many salon management issues. Now through a series of simple steps that when complete can connect across our management ecosystem, which users of the software learn to trust, ultimately creating their own structures. Employees use the self-service tools. This reduces friction between staff and management, encouraging better working relations. Automated systems create better workflows, which leaves managers and staff feeling more informed and more empowered, reducing stress and overwhelm. So having identified the issues relating to the greatest points of stress and overwhelm, we have uh, simplified processes. I will now share with you some of the main stress points and how to handle them with or without loop HR. So what I learned over the years is that the more pain points that you can remove, the more freedom you have in your mind, allowing you to focus on other elements of business and or life. Salon owners differ greatly, but through my work, I realize that we each experience overwhelm in similar ways. And to address overwhelm, we must use a variety of actions, including, but not limited to, better time management, prioritizing tasks, building structure, seeking support, and using stress reduction techniques such as exercise. So let's pick up on building structure. We'll look at different salon management structures in a moment, but first let's look at why structure is so important. And in short, because it's a great way to reduce stress and overwhelm, structure is a series of processes that done regularly become routine. A routine is a set of habits or behaviors that follow a predictable pattern. When used positively, habits can greatly improve our overall well being. And we all know the flip side of uh, a bad habit. Routines bring real value to you, your team and the business. Knowing what to expect and when to expect it can reduce stress and anxiety, making it easy to focus on the tasks at hand, such as preparing for a guest service before they arrive. Routines help improve the way we use our time. For example, fixed work schedules help employees organize their work and personal time. Regular booking times for clients helps reduce stress and improve quality of service. A well-structured routine can boost productivity. So when employees have a set routine for tasks and responsibilities, they can work more efficiently and reduce decision fatigue work-life balance, whatever that may be, 
maintaining a routine for a healthier way of life. You can set clear boundaries for when work begins and ends. And this helps prevent burnout. So we've discussed structure, discipline, and routine. And another important element is purpose. When you or your employee feel you have purpose, you know what you offer to your team, to your guests, et cetera. And you're in, you move in a clear direction, which helps reduce stress, and you feel the power of clarity. In our business, we're really clear on our purpose. That is to simplify management tasks, organize data, and empower salon owners and their teams to perform better. This is our mission. Now let's dive into the nuts and bolts of salon management structure. In no particular order, there's a whole load of processes you need to manage. These processes form the structure of your business. Then there's the stuff that you have to do to support and deliver the processes. And of course, engagement, working with your team to tie it all together. Now, this is just a basic list of HR tasks that salon owners and managers must perform. And each of these bullets is a job in itself. This doesn't include all the other tasks such as stock control or marketing. I'm focusing on the elements people management and processes. To avoid overwhelm, I'd suggest you prioritize a list of tasks. And when you first write your list, it may be incomplete, but as you work in the business and things come up, you just add them to the list. Then as time goes by, you create a calendar or a schedule when you know on this date, I must complete that task. A bit like processing payroll. You know when it must be completed by, and you just do it, even though it's not necessarily a joyful process. I'd suggest you automate as many tasks as you can. Use technology to help you. Now, the great thing with automation is once it's set up, it's done and it happens in the background. Loop HR will help you manage each of these tasks or points. And when I, when I listen to salon owners, I find that their greatest resistance to, uh, to, change or to, to these sort of tasks is twofold. It's primarily a lack of time and secondly, fear. And I've learned that knowing where to start is half of the battle and the other half is actually starting. Of course, once you've started, then the ball, the motion, things keep moving. So from a management perspective, when it comes to reducing stress, I'd encourage every business owner to be clear on their rules. This includes everything from the way you employ your workforce to record keeping to the client journey, stock management, health and safety, and more. And this will be helpful in three ways. Your employees know the rules and will understand why they should work within them. Secondly, besides morally doing the right thing, in the event of an investigation, you're compliant and you have everything you need to protect your business and yourself. And thirdly, and importantly, you have peace of mind. Health and safety. Now, if there was ever an overwhelming job, this is something that absolutely needs to be addressed. And to achieve it, I recommend you choose the path of least resistance. If you're a UK business, you can order a health and safety toolkit from the NHBF or National Hair and Beauty Federation. And if you're not UK based, I'm sure that your federation or equivalent will also have something similar. From the NHBF, you will receive everything you need for health and safety in a box. Um, I'm not paid to say that. It is literally because I ordered it for my own business. And uh, clearly, it was a great um, stress relief having everything you needed. Certainly, you needed to fill out some check boxes, but essentially, it helps uh, demystify and it just takes that pressure away. 
Okay, the next element is handbooks, treatment protocols, policies, and procedures. Again, these are essential tools that you need to run your business, but getting everything in order doesn't need to be as overwhelming as it looks. If you don't have or don't know what materials you need, then ask. You know, I mean, you can ask an employment law specialist, and that doesn't need to be as scary as it sounds either. The likes of the NHBF uh, can provide contracts and a range of policies and procedures, or for more personalized materials specific to your business. There are other industry HR experts who can personalize material for your business. And I'm very happy to share contact details of, uh, of experts that, that we work with. And finally, the individual materials relating to employment. Now, each of these employment documents should be presented, completed, and stored securely. As you build your library of materials, use a secure digital system to share materials. This saves the stress and time of printing and preparing documents manually. For users of Loop HR, the docs and files function is where you store all your documents. It's an easy way to issue them to your whole team at the click of a mouse, of course, um, or share specific documents with individual team members. As you can see by breaking these documents down into groups, they appear less overwhelming. And just one point worth noting, there are companies out there who offer all these documents plus legal helpline support, and they include HR software. Two things that I'd like you to consider. They are always more expensive than industry-specific legal lifeline um, of the NHBF, for example, or other independent offerings. And the HR software that they include is generic. Loop HR is specific to salons with many unique features that save managers hours of time and importantly, relate to your team in a way that they will understand. Like I say, if you'd like more information about documents and legal support for your business, uh, then you can reach out uh, or you can go to my website, go to the affiliates tab and uh, you will find the NHBF details there. Okay, moving on to another job that people find stressful, um, scheduling and managing staff hours. Now, for me, it's another of those tasks that it's about simplifying it as much as you possibly can. So I think, first of all, for your employee, their work schedule is literally just the hours they work. They have no idea how stressful it can be to manage this seemingly easy job. And to you, it's a critical record of work hours that you are legally obliged to record and track attendance, absences, sick, holidays, overtime, time off in lieu. Plus, you need this information to calculate targets, work out commissions, calculate holiday pay. And all of this data is need to process payroll. And it's all tied to compliance. So no wonder people feel stressed and overwhelmed from scheduling. So the question is, how can we simplify it? Well, let's begin by splitting this into two parts, starting by maximizing the opportunity to sell hours. I'll walk you through a simple way to plan schedules. And then we'll look at the different ways salons actually manage their staff hours. So first and foremost, plot the ideal number of operators needed for each day. That would be revenue producing and support staff. And that is literally as simple as a sheet of paper with the days of the week your business is open. And on each day, you literally just write down, I need four stylists. I need one receptionist. I need so many uh, support staff. So go through each day with your ideal number. You're not focusing on the team you have at this point, and you're not building your schedule, the hours. You're literally going, it's Monday. How many people do I need? Okay, I think we've got the point. Uh, so with the number of days mapped out and with the ideal number of staff, 
match the operators uh, that you have to fill the days. Now, if you use split shifts, clearly try to position people in ways that are going to suit their personalities best. If you've got somebody who hates mornings, it's usually easier just to give them the, the, the later shifts. Um, and I would suggest that, that you repeat this for each day using your employees contracted days and hours to best match your ideal schedule. Now, this may highlight that you're under or overstaffed but at least you, you are very aware of the gaps if there are any. And clearly I'm aware that you cannot randomly change somebody's schedule. That's not what I'm suggesting. All you're doing at the moment is building the ideal uh, work schedule for your business and you're trying to match the team members that, uh, that you have. Okay, and finally, once you have a, uh, agreed with your team, a schedule that is going to work for them and for the business, then you take your ideal schedule and you transfer it to your HR system and your point of sale system. Doing things this way is less stressful than trying to manage technology at the same time. And even though we develop technology, um, we're yet to find a way to make it as easy as literally a piece of paper and just map it out. Although Luke will calculate all the hours and do everything that you need to do. Um, this uh, first step and second step is really just about an exercise in your mind, like a, just a, a brain dump of an ideal scenario. The final stage is actually putting it into practice. Okay, so let's move on to um, this, this part where we're looking at balancing hours worked with paid hours. So let's assume that it's pay time. How you pay will make a big difference to the way you manage your schedules. And by that, I mean what your staff contracts say. Are they on fixed contracts or hourly pay? Fixed contracts are by far the simplest and least stressful way to manage your schedules hours and pay. Saying that, it doesn't mean it's for every business. I'm saying it's the easiest way from an administration point of view. A fixed contract would typically mean the worker has the same schedule each week or a mix of predictable shifts. The employee is contract to work these regular hours per week. They work a regular shift. They're paid monthly, the least number of payrolls possible for the least amount of administration stress, and they earn one twelfth of their annual salary, so a fixed pay. Plus, of course, any commissions and bonuses, but we'll leave that to one side for this example. Just as a matter of interest, when asked, 70% of employed workers prefer a fixed contract with fixed hours. Okay, next. So we have a fixed contract, but variable work hours. This is very manageable, assuming there is little change in the schedules, as in workers are paid for the hours that they work each pay period. Um, so for example, somebody's paid monthly, their pay will vary depending if it was a long or a short one. Now this requires more work to manage as obviously precision is key for compliance purposes, and to maintain the trust of your employees. Only 22% of employed workers preferred this method of pay when asked. And finally, workers who are paid hourly with variable work patterns. Uh, this may be due to the business sending workers home if they've not sold their appointment time. All workers are free to arrive later and finish earlier, depending on their client list. But this is the most challenging way to manage employee hours, given the responsibility of the owner to pay for hours workers are on site. So from what we see from an administration point of view, this is the most stressful and time consuming way to manage employee hours. All of that said, Loop HR will cope with any style of contract, any pay structure and scheduling pattern. And interestingly, given the number of salons that use this 
most complex way of paying, only 8% of employed workers preferred this contract style. So just a quick note on flexible working. I'm not going to read this to you, but if it's relevant to you, then please screenshot it. The condensed version is flexible working does not mean employees can chop and change their uh, work hours uh, here and there. It's more an organized way to accommodate the need for flexible, regular working. Okay, uh, performance management. Now, this covers a broad range of elements. And the reason that this is here under managing uh, stress and overwhelm is because managers often find it quite challenging to engage with the team. So I'll go through a few key points. It's fair to say that to truly engage with your team, you need to put structure in place and use routine as a consistent form of engagement to make it work best. And when we talk about performance management, we normally think of uh, numbers. And for you, the numbers are important, but they're business numbers. For your employees, the numbers you focus on may not be that important. And to be honest, some of the numbers used in the salon industry make little sense in today's business uh, environment or workspace. So to manage performance, we recommend that you come at it from a few different angles. We'll start by having a clear expectation you must be able to demonstrate what good looks like and importantly, show how to achieve or deliver whatever it is that you expect. So for your business, select about six or seven main KPIs, key performance indicators, covering a range of criteria that when achieved, bring real value to the business. Now, an example, in today's world would be the number of Google reviews. Uh, for a salon, that's a really useful KPI uh, to the business and something you can clearly reward someone for. Unlike request rates, which as a KPI does nothing to build the business, it just builds the ego of your team so or the team member. So consider your key performance indicators very carefully. Agree goals with team members. Explain all your KPIs to your employee and ask them to choose three or four. Explain what will happen when one or all of the KPIs are achieved. Now, when I say three or four KPIs, it's an example, but assuming one of them must be financial, with a range of other KPIs to choose from, the employee is going to select the elements that they want to measure themselves against. It shouldn't matter to you what they pick, as all your KPIs lead to a stronger business. And also some KPIs could uh, be rewarded differently than others. So you, you may be able to pay somebody for a, each five-star Google review and that's a tangible thing. It's easy to validate. So just, as I say, making sure that there's real, uh, real clarity on, um, on your KPI structure and that it is communicated well. And then when it comes to rewards, as I say, rewarding proportionately to the value of the achievements. And if you are looking at financial KPIs, then it's easy to measure the van value, as I say, because that's another tangible one. And you see, uh, you can see a true percentage of cost. On that note, if you use Lupe Char, the target setting graphic will report costs against a range of income for various commission levels and bonus structures. So rewards should make people feel good for achieving and encourage them to repeat their achievements. So now you have your KPI set up, you need to engage with your employee. Use your processes, uh, manual or 
digital. So in our case, we're looking at our HR system to share information. We want to help employees understand how they're performing. We want to give them direction when needed and encourage them through to success. Ultimately, empower them. We need to ask questions. Dialogue is a two-way thing. Use informal one-on-ones and performance reviews to build uh, trust, encourage open dialogue, and reinforce accountability. To reduce the stress of regular engagement and to save time, we recommend you create templates for your reviews and engagement. This allows you to map out how the, uh, the year's worth of reviews or processes will look. And of course, you can personalize the form for each meeting as needed. Again, use a mix of in-person meetings and virtual reviews. In Loop HR, you can build templates, create in-person or virtual reviews, and arrange an off-the-cuff review in just a heartbeat. So team members would answer questions within their employee portal if they're using Loop, and you each have a secure record of the review and performance management. This is just... So if you don't use Loop, but I would really recommend using a digital platform somehow. It just saves all the paper. It saves things getting lost. It's better for uh, GDPR for compliance. So that would be my recommendation to reduce stress. Okay, and in this section of engagement, we're looking at different styles of communication. Just to check in. Use some of your generic review material in your team meetings as reminders uh, for key points. You know, th these, are, these are things that you've discussed in a one-on-one, -on -one, and these are, this is a great way to trigger reminders. So use individual check-ins to casually ask how things are going, but remember to listen and follow up on actions. Okay, a shift of tangent uh, right now, because we're talking holiday uh, leave, and holiday pay in the UK, uh, particularly, but I know in many European countries, and actually, to be fair, in uh, in uh, the greater world, uh, most places have some sort of uh, rules around holidays. Some of them are more generous than others, and certainly in Europe and the UK, they are really quite generous in comparison to some parts of the world. But in the salon industry, generally. There is more to managing staff holidays than simply approving leave. So first, let's clarify some language. In parts of the world, holidays are referred to as state or public holiday, and vacation is referred to as personal leave. In the UK, we mainly refer to all annual leave as holidays, and this is the total uh, holiday entitlement, including bank and public holidays. Although historically, holidays were separated out as four weeks plus bank and public holidays. As of 2024, the UK government will stop using EU law and there will be some changes coming in around holidays. Um, but holiday allowances will officially be referred to as 5.6 weeks with no separation of uh, bank and public holidays at all. Holiday allowances are typically referred to in days or hours and employees would be allocated an allowance based on their contracted days and or hours, depending on uh, their contract. In the UK, holidays are accrued unless businesses have a more generous rule based on the hours they've worked. So if you start or leave partway through the year, you uh, would calculate the pro rata allowance. So, one of the stress points around um, holiday and uh, leave generally is uh, people asking for leave when they shouldn't be t asking it for it. You know, that's like, oh, well, you know, the rule is and whatever else. So whatever your rules around holidays, I strongly recommend you write them down. Your holiday policy should clearly outline your uh, policies and procedures around allowances, 
how and when holidays can and cannot be taken. So, for example, in the UK, you can state certain times are unavailable to take, for example. Management could block out times around busy periods. You can state the salon will be closed at this particular period. So they're forced holidays. You can set rules around the notice to request leave, as in you could state you must give 30 days notice to request leave. And likewise, your rules can state an employee must give 30 days notice to cancel leave. As you know, this is giving the business time to resell their appointment times. Your holiday policy would be accessible to team members. So for Lupe, Lupe Char users, um, you would add it to your docs and files under the policies and procedures. And or you would clearly define it in your handbook. But the reason I like to separate it out uh, or separate out particularly the holiday policy is it makes it easy for team members to find it in your list of policies. OK, to help reduce the stress of managing holidays, I recommend you use a cloud based software, allowing employees to self manage their side of the holidays um, and simply um, from your element, all you have to do then is just the administration process. Um, it cuts out, again, this back forth paper request, text, all the, the different elements. Uh, for Loop HR users, you can manage all rules uh, within holiday settings function. Employees can see their company holiday calendar, their annual allowance, track balances. They can make holiday requests and managers can approve, decline, or suggest date changes all within the system. Right, now we get to the meaty bit, holiday commissions. Really, what we've just talked about was the easy, the easy part. Um, and certainly there are plenty of complex issues around holidays when it comes to pay. In the UK, employers are obliged to pay variable holiday commissions for those who earn commissions as part of their salary. Holiday commission should be paid on services and retail commission and bonuses and overtime earned over the past 52 weeks. This changed in April of 2020. Back then you could calculate holiday commission based on an average of 12 weeks. For base pay without commission, of course, it's super easy. Simply pay the base rate for the hours of leave. For base pay plus commission, it's fairly straightforward. The holiday commission is treated as a top up based uh, on because the, the bulk of the holiday pay is covered by base pay. And uh, it's simply a, a, a pro rata of the past 52 weeks that you pay the team member. Um, and then for whichever is higher, it's slightly more complicated to find the average hourly rate, but you do need to ensure that the holiday rate does not fall below the national minimum wage, um, which when you've got whichever is higher uh, can, uh, can occur if not careful. Of course, you can keep it all really simple and use Lupe Char payroll function, because it will do all the variable pay calculations for you, no matter which pay structure you use. When paying commission in arrears, you would also pay holiday commission in arrears. I'll not go into the complexities of this, but it is suffice to say that if uh, you pay commission in arrears and use Lupe HR payroll, the system will process the holiday commission in arrears at the time it's supposed to. Speaking of payroll, when using Lupe Char payroll, the system will separate out the holiday commission allocation. And for clarity and peace of mind, you can drill down on how the calculation was achieved, making it super easy to pinpoint any data required should you need it. And of course, if you're not using Loop, then you need to uh, keep a record of this and manually be able to uh, identify, even retrospectively, uh, how you got to a number. And finally, you have a team member leave. It can be stressful calculating all the pro rata payments. 
Obviously, this is something that needs to be very carefully tracked. But if you use Loop, stress not, we will capture and report all of the data you need, including accrued allowances to the date of leaving. And any final variable holiday commission payments will be calculated for you. If a lever is owed holiday, the system will show you the hours, the rate of pay at base rate, and the commission owed based on the past 52 weeks. If you need to claw back holiday pay, the system will automatically search the precise pay rates made for the corresponding hours, and the precise clawback value will feed into the payroll report. And in the termination report, the system will show you a breakdown of all final payments, all hours. Everything is in one place, literally. It's a brain dump. All of this can be done manually, of course. But the question is, why would you? Okay, we've covered a lot. But this is, of course, just touching on the more complex elements of salon management. Stress is an important part of life. It acts as a driver to achieve great things sometimes, but overwhelm can be managed. Hopefully, what we've demonstrated today will help you pinpoint some areas where uh, you can help reduce some of your own overwhelm in your business. But before we go into the Q&A section, I just want in, uh, to thank you for attending today's event. And in the spirit of uh, Black Friday, we're offering an extended trial to 60 days. Uh, this gives you uh, plenty of time to trial Loop HR and takes you through the busy December period into January, where uh, assumably you will have more time to focus on your business and put some fantastic structures and efficient processes into your salon. To start your free trial, simply go to our website, loophr.com and click register, start free trial. So that just leads me to say uh, thank you very much for attending today's event. If you would like to reach out or you want any more information, please contact us via the website, loophr.com. There's a, a live chat feature. You can get us there. There's tons of information on the website, but uh, thank you. Thank you on behalf of the Salon Business Collective for attending today's event. I wish you well.